Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery. I hope you are doing well. Today we're going to talk about the difference between standing and sitting while throwing pots. I throw pots both of those ways, so we'll talk about some advantages, disadvantages of each way. And if you haven't tried one or the other, I hope to encourage you to give it a shot and see how you like it. So, let's go! Before we dive into throwing today and into the details of the video, I want to take a moment to talk about a couple things. And that being one of the reasons that I make YouTube videos, other than wanting to spread the knowledge and love of pottery and ceramics uh, around the world the best I can and share some of the knowledge that I have about that subject, one of the things that I, it's probably a really big goal, well, I know it's a really big goal, but one of the things that I'd like to do by making YouTube videos is make the world a better place. I know that sounds kind of like lofty and crazy, but uh, I think every one of us can do that in some way. And so by making YouTube videos, I hope that by sharing enjoyment, excitement, uh, energy, things that excite me, I can make the world a little bit better place in some ways. One of the things that I think that will make the world a better place is wisdom. And I think one of the best sources of wisdom is probably things that have been written, uh, either ancient writings or just things that have stood the test of time that were true a thousand years ago or a hundred years ago that are still true today. Those things to me that, that if you can read something that was written a long time ago and you connect with it, to me there's probably wisdom in that because if it was true then and it's true today, there's probably something really concrete to that that can mean a lot to us. And so today I just want to take a minute to read a poem to you that I, haven't, I didn't know about until uh, pretty recent. This is a, a poem called If by Rudyard Kipling, written in 1943, okay? Or at least published in 1943. And this one, when I read it, I, I heard somebody quoted a small bit of it, and I thought, man, I really need to find that poem and read the whole thing. And when I read the whole thing, I thought, man, this is so 80 years old, and it pertains today as much as it did back then, and even maybe more so, because it has a lot to do with... Uh, the way you can conduct yourself in this world to, to, to have a successful, happy life, and there's wisdom in this. So, not going to take too much more time, but here is If by Rudyard Kipling. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves and to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you've gave your life to, broken, and stoop and build them up with worn-out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, Hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And what is more, you'll be a man, my son. So I hope that inspires you today as it does me every time I read it to just realize that, you know what, there are things, and I think what this says most is that if you can have a proper perspective to your life and everything that you're pursuing and hold your health, yourself in high regard but not really too much, keep a level head and just go forward be confident in yourself and what you know to be true, but then still give way, still give, uh, still give reason or still give uh, space in your life for being corrected 
I think you can be successful and be happy. So there's that. Now let's get into the video of throwing, standing, and sitting. All right, first thing I'll say about standing at a wheel is that I like to stand at the side of the wheel because if you stand at this end of the wheel, all of your tools and water bucket are on the farthest away from you. If you're sitting, you kind of have to sit at this end of the wheel because your legs have to straddle the wheel and then you reach over here for all your tools. But if you're standing, the great thing is is that you can turn the wheel kind of sideways so the control panel's right here at my right leg. I can have my water bucket and this little table space here for all of my tools. I can stand here and throw. I put the, the foot pedal on the wheel. Some people that stand and throw will put the foot pedal up on here and then control it with their hands so they can be a little bit more stable in their stance. You can do it either way. I just like to have the control of speeding up and slowing down the wheel while I'm standing as well as while I'm sitting to throw. So that's first and foremost, I like to do that. Uh, from a very early stage in learning to throw, I always had a place that I put my tools and I try the best I can to put my tools back in that place when I'm done because it just helps me in the process. That's kind of a production uh, pottery thing that you will learn if you ever get into production. It just makes you faster if you can put your tools. You don't have to hunt in your water bucket for your chip and your rib and your sponge and your whatever. I, whatever tools I'm going to use, number one, I try not to use a lot of them. And number two, I try to put them back in a similar spot. I have everything I need within reaching different si distance. I've got my bats, my water, all my tools, and my clay balls are here to my left as well. So I like to have the wheel head so that it's kind of like uh, just below my belly button. So it's probably three or four inches below where my belly button is. It's kind of like the at the top of the splash pan is kind of like right at the top of my pants. Um, I don't like to have the, the wheel too low or too high because, um, you know, as I'm, I want to be able to lean into the clay a little bit in order to center it, but I don't want the wheel too low so that I don't have to bend too far over to see the, to see the side angle of whatever I'm making. Uh, sitting down, that's another uh, thing that you have to do sitting throwing is, is you have to bend over quite a lot more than standing because you can raise the wheel up a bit more while you're standing and you still got good, uh, good leverage on the wheel. So. All right, we're going to be throwing a coffee mug here. I'll do the same kind of shape sitting and standing so you kind of see the same thing. You can watch my body posture. You can watch how it's made sitting and standing. I don't have a gauge on my sit-down wheel, but I have one on my stand-up wheel for making the mugs. That'll about be the only difference in the two. Like I said, I have my right foot on the foot pedal. When I go to center, I step my left foot back a little bit, so I kind of still have a staggered stance, which gives me, uh, gives me my stability. I like that because now I'm, I'm, I'm like pretty close to the, to the clay ball, but with not having to lean way over. I mean, my body is, 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 is bent over a little bit, but not like it would be sitting down throwing something small like this. I like to stand while throwing anything that I'm kind of throwing in a production manner. That's probably, I threw standing for most of my, uh, most of the years that I've been throwing, and mo that's most likely, or mostly because most of my time was spent throwing production. Uh, if you're going to throw production, it's actually better to stand and throw because you can, uh, if you need to, to move around, get away from the wheel to either move pots and things like that, it's definitely a lot easier to not have to get up out of your chair every time you have to move, you know, move some pots to the rack or to a table or whatever. And so that's one of the biggest advantages of standing is that if you're throwing production, it's easier to uh, move away from the wheel and then back. You do, you do lean over quite a bit, uh, or at least I do, uh, while standing and throwing, but it's not really any more than sitting down. I think for making smaller items, I probably lean over a bit less while standing and throwing than I would by sitting. Um, I would say uh, standing and throwing, I, I learned the reason I started throwing sitting down is because I realized I had a little bit better leverage uh, while sitting and throwing than standing. So I started throwing some taller items while sitting, and uh, since then I have been throwing, uh, I probably throw more sitting down than I do standing now, which is kind of interesting to me, um, but uh, I really do enjoy both ways, depending on what I'm making, like I said, but when I get into production mode, if I'm making mugs or, uh, you know, if I was making cereal bowls or tea glasses or anything like that, that's, that's a kind of a high production or a large number of items that are smaller, I like to stand up and throw. I'll, I'll throw one more real quick. 
think, see if I, I think of any more items. Uh, and you guys feel free in the comment section if you have any questions that I don't answer as far as standing and sitting. Uh, let me know and I'll answer those. My stand-up wheel here is a, um, it's a Pacifica GT400. Um, it's, uh, I, I probably prefer Brent wheels as my favorite kind of wheel, but I'll tell you this, this Pacifica GT400, I threw on one for years at one of the shops that I used to work for, and it is a workhorse of a wheel, and for the price, it's probably one of the best priced wheels for what you get out of it. A lot of people ask me what kind of wheels that I use, and so this one's a Pacifica GT400, which is made by Laguna, and then my other sit down, my sit down wheel is a Brent CXC. Now we'll move on to the sit down wheel and then we will uh, wrap things up maybe with a few more thoughts once we're done with both of them. All right, when it comes to throwing, sitting down, first tip for me is have a really nice cushion because <laughs> at least for me, I need the padding. I don't have natural padding back there. I know that's a blessing in a way, but I need a really nice cushion. I've tried a couple different ones. This is just a portion of a cushion from an old couch and it works amazing because it always comes back, it squishes down, and I tell you, uh, when I sit down on this, it's really a whole lot nicer than sitting down on any kind of hard chair or stool, even if it has a little bit of padding. So number one tip, get you a really nice cushion. All right, so this sit-down wheel is just sitting on the ground. Uh, there have been times in previous videos where I've shown uh, throwing like one pound vases where I set the wheel up on uh, bricks that were like added three inches to height, now, if I was were to sit down to throw a bunch of coffee mugs, I probably would do the same so that I don't have to lean over as much to see the profile uh, of the vase but for, or of the, of the mug. But for throwing lots of other things that I throw, I like the wheel this height so you can see that it's, it's uh, as far as my, my legs sitting right on the ground, I've got it's going like to the middle of my knee there as far as where the splash pan is, uh, just as far as height. I still do the similar thing as far as having a place for all my tools like I do uh, while I'm standing and throwing. So I've got my large cleanup sponge here. I've got a putty knife there in case I need to clean anything. And then I have my throwing sponge, my rib, and my, um, my screwdriver and my needle tool all on the right side kind of in that order. So um, if I'm ever needing to clean the wheel, I like to have a larger sponge to do that with so I don't always do it with my throwing sponge. Um, I still have my bats right here within reach. Usually if I'm going to have a bunch of pieces that I throw sitting down, I, I have some plastic that I put here and I have all my clay balls right here to my right so that I don't have to get up uh, very often either. And then I have a rack to my left over here that I can put a lot of pots on while I'm throwing sitting down. I still have to, to get up more often or I have to get up fairly often to, um, to move things. Um, but there's just things that I have found that sitting down throwing taller forms, uh, just about any kind of vase um, or taller form is, is I enjoy sitting down throwing better than standing. I have more control, more leverage. All right, like I said, we're going to do the, the same coffee mug. I don't have the gauge set up, so uh, I don't know how close they'll be. Maybe we'll show that at the end to see how close I get in size and shape uh, without having the gauge. Not that they have to be all the same, uh, definitely is not the case, but I, while I'm throwing a set of, uh, a bunch of mugs, I set a gauge, I throw five or six different styles of mugs, but once I'm going to make several of one style, I'll set a gauge so that it makes me a little bit quicker while I'm throwing because subconsciously I just know, okay, well I'm throwing to that gauge and once I get to that gauge, I'm, I'm good to go and so my brain just kind of goes in autopilot. Sitting down throwing is nice because there are times that I'm just like don't feel like standing up to throw and sitting in a chair sounds really nice so sitting down throwing is really nice. I already mentioned the fact that uh, there is some stability advantages to sitting down because uh, I always have my, my thighs to rest my arms, my forearms or my elbows on when I go to throw or whatever I like to lock in my 
my elbow uh, into my kind of like hip socket there and I can really get steadiness there. So there's lots of, uh, of kind of like control and steadiness advantages to throwing sitting down. You can see even right now, just, just to clean up around the edge of the bottom, I've got both of my forearms onto my thighs and I'm just in a kip and I've even got my hands touching here just to make it just to give me give me the advantage of being more steady now like I said going for the profile view it's a lot harder sitting down for something this small which is where if I was gonna make a bunch of these sitting I probably would raise the wheel up just a little bit so that I didn't have to lean over quite as far to do this but it is still possible. And of course I could set up a gauge fairly easily on this wheel as well, even if I just took a big chunk of clay and put a skewer in that. All right, there's one, let's make another one. Like I said, if you have any questions about either one or something that you see that I don't mention, Feel free to put that in the comments and I'll be happy to answer it. I worked next to a guy that sat down throwing his entire career and he'd been throwing pots like 10 years longer than me when I was working uh, next to him at one of the shops that I worked at. And he always sat down and threw everything. And so it kind of got me thinking. And I, one day I thought, you know what? I'm going to try sitting down throw. And I hadn't done it in years. I mean, like years and years. And when I sat down to throw, I was like, oh. Like I was throwing something tall. I can't remember exactly what it was. But I was like, man, I really like this. And so um, it, even though I was throwing production at that time, whatever I was throwing was still a little bit easier sitting down throwing than it was standing. So then I would alternate back and forth. Uh, even while I was still doing the production journeyman work for other people and so once I got set up at home I said you know what I'm gonna have two wheels I'm gonna have one that's always sitting here on the uh, on the ground and I'm gonna have one that's always for standing up at and then I can just switch back and forth if I need to depending on what I'm making definitely going to be some difference in size in these. I think especially maybe the top's a little bit wider on these than it is on the ones that I have that I threw with the gauge while I was standing. But we'll see in just a minute. All right, well, there you have it. There's a few differences, advantages, maybe disadvantages of standing and sitting and maybe some tips on each of them. Uh, and here's the two... Uh, Here's two of the mugs uh, that I made. They look pretty similar. I will tell you the one that I made according to the gauge is five and three quarters tall by three and a half inches wide. The one I made sitting and both of them that I made sitting were both five and a half inches tall and three and a half inches wide. So they were consistent. They're just a quarter inch shorter than the ones that I made to the gauge. Um, so they're very close in shape and size, um, but obviously nobody's perfect and they don't need to be perfect. But uh, it's really neat to see that I got pretty close uh, without being exact. But uh, anyway, hope this video helps. I hope you enjoyed the uh, little bit of wisdom and poem at the beginning. If you did, please uh, feel free to leave a like and a comment on that as well if you'd like to hear more of that in the future. Just maybe a little minute or two or five, I guess maybe it was, uh, of wisdom or something like that at the beginning of the video. It's something I'd love to share if you're open to hearing it. So anyway, hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you soon. All right, bye-bye.